The Brazil men's national team, popular called Selecao, have boasted an unparalleled plethora of attacking talents, such as Romario, Adriano, Edu, Bebeto, yet none shone as brightly as Ronaldo. The Brazilian legend is also known as Ronaldo de Lima, and nicknamed Fenomeno, or R9, is considered as one of the greatest players of all time. As a versatile striker who added a fresh dimension to the position, Ronaldo Fenomeno was in a class of his own, with a dazzling combination of speed, dribbling, feints, and accurate finishing that elevated him to the pinnacle of the exquisite game. While Ronaldo flourished for PSV Eindhoven, Barcelona, Inter Milan, and Real Madrid, his most cherished memories are frequently colored in the iconic yellow of Brazil. World Cup and Copa America victories, coupled with several other individual honors, place him beside Pele as a Selecao legend. Living beside such elegance came naturally for certain individuals. Romario, Bebeto, Rivaldo, Edmundo, and Ronaldinho all prospered alongside Fenomeno. Here are five excellent attackers who were overshadowed by Ronaldo's brilliance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the notifications bell for more video. 1. Giovanni Elber Giovan Elber established himself as one of the Bundesliga's best strikers during the course of 10 seasons, three with Stuttgart and seven with Bayern Munich. Elber was another kind of striker to Ronaldo, but no less deserving, a forward capable of both linking play and finishing off attacking moves, a heady blend of Brazilian panache and German dedication. Elber was brought to Europe by AC Milan, and left without appearing for the first team, going on to have successful periods with Grasshopper Zurich and Stuttgart. His finest years, however, came with Bayern Munich, where he helped the club win four Bundesliga titles, three German Cups, and the Champions League. Club top scorer in six of his seven seasons at Bayern, Elber's 133 goals in 260 appearances made him the Bundesliga's all-time top foreign goal scorer until Claudio Pizarro took his crown. Yet throughout this time, Elber remained on the fringes of the Brazil national team. Like Ronaldo, Elber was a teen prodigy, emerging from the 1991 FIFA World Youth Championship, in which he scored four goals in six matches. Despite this, and his subsequent form in Germany, he did not receive his first senior call-up until 1998. His absence has long been blamed on his decision to play in Germany, with Brazilian managers preferring foreign players from Italy or Spain. When he did get an opportunity, it came with a catch. Brazil's coach, Luiz Felipe Scolari, gave Elber the option to replace an injured Ronaldo in the team for the 2001 Copa America in Colombia. Elber rejected, citing security concerns that had already caused Argentina to withdraw completely. Scolari refused to select him again, subsequently eliminating his chances of making the 2002 finals. The subject is closed, Elber upon announcing his international retirement. When the 2006 World Cup comes around, I will be 33, and I will not have the desire or the ability to play. He finished with seven goals in 15 games for Brazil. 2. Mario Jardel The specter of Ronaldo loomed enormously over Mario Jardel's career as one of Europe's leading strikers in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Jardel's goal-scoring arsenal was possibly more diversified than even Phenomenon's, despite his reputation as an out-and-out -out poacher. He was an excellent finisher in the box and was equally at ease shooting from a distance, and his bullet headers became something of a trademark. Jardel also scored prolifically, with 30 or more goals in each of his first five seasons in Europe, beginning with Porto, when he scored 166 goals in 169 games from 1997 to 2000. It may, however, have been even better. Linked with the likes of Inter Milan and Barcelona, Jardel never got the chance to follow in Ronaldo's footsteps at either, scorned twice, and instead signed for Galatasaray, and a year later, Sporting Lisbon. Jardel scored 34 times for the Turkish club during his single-season stay, before moving on to Sporting in 2001, where he fired the club to a first league title in almost 20 years, scoring 42 goals in 30 league games. Given that Ronaldo only scored 7 goals in 16 games that season, that alone should have been enough to get Jardel into the 2002 World Cup.
But Scolari had already stamped his card. Elber declined Scolari's invitation to play for Brazil in place of Ronaldo in the Copa America in Colombia in the summer of 2001, but Jardel accepted it. He had a terrible time and didn't score as Brazil lost to Honduras in the quarterfinals, proving Scolari's suspicion that his stats were exaggerated. Jardel's career never recovered when he was left off the 2002 team in favor of lesser-known players content to sit on the bench while Ronaldo shone. He departed sporting a year later, starting a career that was more and more itinerant and faded, bloated replicas of his former incarnations. 3. Sonny Anderson How do you replace a player like Ronaldo? For Barcelona, the answer was Sonny Anderson. Or at least, that's how the public and media perceived it. Anderson arrived in Barcelona in 1997 after spending three years in France. The Brazilian first spent six months with Marseille, scoring 16 goals in 20 games. But it was with Ass Monaco that he really established himself, netting 64 goals in 112 appearances for the Principality side. But the Brazilian was so much more than just a goal scorer. He could finish with his left and right, hold the ball up, win it in the air and play passes. He could do a lot. And he did it at lightning pace, his Monaco teammate John Collins told the BBC. Anderson, a league champion with Monaco in 1997, was also named Ligue 1 Player of the Year and emerged as the star player in a team featuring Emmanuel Petit, Thierry Henry and David Trezeguet. That was enough to see Barcelona fork out 17 million euros for his services, but supporters were unconvinced. It was a very difficult time because when I arrived, I cost more money than Ronaldo and the fans expected from me a similar performance, he said. Ronaldo was a unique player, and the fans didn't know much about me because I played in France. Despite scoring 10 times in La Liga during a double-winning debut campaign, for Louis van Gaal, the Ronaldo comparisons continued, especially as Phenomenon bagged 25 for Inter that same season. Though another title followed, it wasn't long before Anderson was on his way back to France with Lyon, having become fed up with life under Van Gaal at a club where he was forever in the shadow of another Brazilian who wasn't even there. It was a move that curtailed any hopes of an international career, one that amounted to only six appearances and, in reality, only started in August 1997, just as Anderson was being hailed as Ronaldo's replacement. 4. Marcio Amoroso Amoroso was once thought to be on track to achieve the same heights as Ronaldo did when he was younger. But fate had other plans. The Brazilian, who had made an impression with Guarani in his home nation, arrived in Italy in 1997, a year before Ronaldo, and proving why he was one of Brazil's most highly regarded young players at the time with Udinese. The 22-year-old Amoroso defied his age to bag 12 goals in the ultra-defensive Serie A. An intelligent, skillful attacker capable of playing as a traditional number 9 or 10, Brazil manager Mario Zagallo was among Amoroso's many admirers and may well have taken him to the 1998 World Cup had he not been injured. After recovering from his injury, Amoroso was back in action and, more importantly, was outscoring Ronaldo in Serie A. His return of 22 goals made him the division's top scorer, eight goals ahead of Phenomeno. Amoroso was chosen to play for Vanderlei Luxemburgo's Brazil team at the 1999 Copa America, where he once again shone. Scoring four goals to lead Brazil to the title, including the game-winning goal in Brazil's two, one semi-final victory over Mexico. Part of an attacking quartet that included Rivaldo, Ronaldinho, and Ronaldo, he even won praise from the latter, who described him as an animal and great to play with with Amoroso making a flying start to life at new club Borussia Dortmund, with a tally of 26 goals in 46 games, helping the club win the Bundesliga. Amoroso finished as the top scorer in the process. However, a change in coaches as the 2002 World Cup neared left Amoroso out in the cold under Scolari. The Brazilian coach was unwilling to change his views about European leagues other than those in Italy or Spain, even when Amoroso, who had just scored three goals against AC Milan in the UEFA Cup that season, told reporters, The hat trick is a message to Scolari. Amoroso was left off the 23-man squad, 
and his subsequent career was similarly marred by injuries as Ronaldo's was. However, although Fenomeno's gift for timing allowed him to return at a crucial moment for Brazil, his compatriot in the Copa America was less fortunate. His exclusion could have gained greater attention if Brazil had failed to win the 2002 World Cup. But as the phrase goes, the victor writes history. 5. Giovanni Giovanni Silva de Oliveira, a predecessor to Neymar among Santos supporters, earned his nickname Messiah among the Brazilian club's fans after scoring 37 goals in 36 games over two years. When he joined Barcelona in 1996, he faced a greater challenge. He was signed to play as an attacking midfielder, but he was as efficient in front of goal. Giovanni, who was classy, imaginative, and possessed great ball technique, could have stolen the show in that first season if it hadn't been for Ronaldo's arrival. Instead, he had to settle with becoming Barcelona's next most intriguing Brazilian talent. Giovanni scored both home and away against Red Star Belgrade in the European Cup and scored the game-winning goal against Real Madrid in the Copa del Rey. But Giovanni faded into the background as the season progressed, used rarely by Bobby Robson, and forced to watch as Ronaldo grew to prominence. He scored 12 goals in all competitions. Giovanni may have felt he finally had a chance to live up to his Santos reputation when Robson moved upstairs and Ronaldo moved to Inter that summer. But he underestimated the disciplinarian mentality of new manager Louis van Gaal, a manager he claimed was a Hitler for Brazilians. He is arrogant, haughty, and has a mental problem, he said. He was uncomfortable being around Brazilians. He always said that we were not training well. Van Gaal has no idea of football and always comes with the same training sessions. He seems crazy. Giovanni soon departed for Olympiacos, where his all-action displays earned him the nickname The Wizard. Although he had a successful career in Greece, winning five league titles and scoring some remarkable goals, his popularity quickly dimmed in Brazil. He was a member of the Selecao squad for the 1998 World Cup and the 1997 Copa America, although he had little impact in either tournament and was not chosen again. Ronaldo performed far better. Although the wizard may have despised Van Gaal, he must have secretly desired he could use magic to remove Ronaldo. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell for videos like this weekly.